Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Blacklisted Voice. Uh, today we have Yana uh, as one as our guest. Um, she has an extremely unique story going from um, an orphan in Bulgaria to competing in CrossFit with a massive injury uh, sustained throughout the uh, course of her athletic career. So if you guys are looking for some inspiration and some motivation, um, Yana has a great story, so give it a listen uh, and we'll get into it. What's going on, Yana? Not much. <laughs> Welcome to Georgia. Thank you. How's your drive in? Long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Did you have to drive last time when you came with Krista? Yeah, but I came with Krista, so it wasn't that bad. What do you do on long car rides? Uh, usually podcasts or music or, you know. What'd you, what'd you listen to this time? Uh, I was feeling a little more worship and I was feeling a little more, you know, sermon. So I listened to a couple. Oh, you wanted the couple. whole sermon? Like, I listened to a couple of sermons, and then, I mean, the sermons are anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15, and then music, and then another one. You did, like, the whole, like, worship yeah, offering in no, the no, car. No, 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 no. So, like, when they do it, like, so the podcast version, they skip the whole music portion. And oh. it's just them actually uh, preaching. Just them talking. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So, it comes out to a, about an hour and 15 or so. They talk for an hour and 15 minutes? About, give or take. I'm the pastor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's, you have a seven hour drive. What what else are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. It it helps the trip go a a little uh, less boring, but still long. (laughs) Do you ever sit (laughs) in silence? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's the cool part. Like, you know, you put music on or you put something on in the background because half the time I usually kind of zone out mm-hmm. and then that usually makes it drive a little bit quicker because then you're like so you time in your travel own, yeah, yeah 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 you're like oh look at that it's so many yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 if you don't do that then you're like oh it's only been five minutes <laughs> but yeah. yeah it's not as bad if you can zone out yeah, yeah yeah which yeah yeah but once you get traffic was fine until i got to georgia freaking georgia it's all the bad lights here. it's bad yeah it <laughs> it's makes real it bad. yeah yeah, so I made it <clears throat> in two stops, and then I stopped once I was about, like, 40 minutes away. I stopped oh, okay, again. yeah. So technically three, but I could have done it in two. But Is that, like, a challenge for yourself for when you go back? <laughs> Only because I know once I get back in the car, it's like, oh, I have that much more left. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> when I do stop, it's like I run straight to the bathroom. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thanks for coming on. Um, you have a you have a pretty remarkable story, so I'm excited for people to kind of hear a little bit, and um, hopefully, people can learn something from your trials and tribulations <laughs> over life. I uh, appreciate you having me on, and thank for you sure. for uh, bringing me on. Yeah, yeah. Um, why don't you start off just telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, you are not originally from America, actually. <laughs> I am not. Uh, I am from uh, Bulgaria. Uh-huh. And I was in an orphanage for nine years. In Bulgaria? In Bulgaria. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then I was adopted at, you know, uh, age of nine and mm-hmm. then came to America and lived in Connecticut. What was the orphanage like? Um, it was very lonely. Okay. Uh, there was probably about, you know, around 30 plus kids in there. Oh, okay. So it was like... Was it like a cot system? Like you all just like <clears throat> went into one big room? Like... Uh, so my orphanage kind of had uh, two floors. Okay. So the top floor had two separate areas. So in the areas, it had a kitchen area, a bathroom area, and then like a living room area, and then living or uh, going to bed area. Yeah. Um. So we were... Uh, and then the basement also, or not the basement, but the main level had the same thing layout. Oh, okay. So when there was a lot of kids, all the rooms were filled up. Oh. And then there was some time where, like, you had to share a bed and all that. But, um, yeah, and then it was, I was technically considered one of the older kids there. Okay, yeah. So just imagining, like, when you were seven, what you were doing, I was doing, uh, taking care of kids that were younger than me mm-hmm. and helping out with... Uh, getting the food ready, getting the kids ready for just getting them up and putting them to bed and all that. So, yeah. 
um, kind of crazy to think that that's what I was doing at seven years seven old. Seven years then, old, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it was a, a different change when I came to America, and I had my first uh, birthday party, and I was like, what is this? And Oh, you had your first birthday party in America? Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. They didn't even, they didn't No, care. they don't celebrate. <laughs> no, imagine, like, 30-plus kids, yeah. like, you know. You have a birthday every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every day, yeah. I actually didn't even know my birthday until I it was closer to being adopted. So oh, really? I didn't even know when. But the know. the orphanage knew your birthday. Yeah. Or like you didn't just get some random day. They were like, "This is young." Um. No. Like, no. 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 Because they they, sure they got me, uh, or I was put in there. Uh, pretty young. Okay. Um. So I was there for quite a while. So yeah. I think they kind of had history on me. Oh, but okay. Yeah. It is interesting because you know uh, the process of being adopted there is. Um, you know, they, they had a easier time finding my birth mom, mm. but my birth dad, they couldn't find, or it took a long time for to find him. Oh, okay. And they need to find the parents to be able t to have them sign off to be oh. like, oh, we accept that we no longer have custody of her and we give that yeah. right up. And so, um, and then you can also tell if, you know, if they've had some form of education or not, because mm -hmm. my mom's handwriting you could tell she had some because it was in cursive, mm. and then my dad's wasn't. Um, oh, okay. So, um, I don't know too much about them or really anything because yeah. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know whether or not it was a one night thing or if it was a rape thing or what. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that they had a way harder time finding him. Yeah. Um, than yeah. They did with my mom. Yeah. But she did so. I was also born with a uh, cleft lip and palate. Mm -hmm. So where your palate and your lip don't form all the way. Mm -hmm. So it just causes a lot of uh, infection as mm -hmm. you're a baby. And so from the paperwork, it, it shows that my mom did try to take care for me as best as she could. And mm -hmm. then she got to the point where um, she found out that or like the orphanage was a better life than what yeah. she was able to do. Oh, okay. Um, so that's where I was uh, there for, mm -hmm. you know, nine years and then was adopted. So Was it just like a culture shock coming to America? Um, a little bit. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is like um, America is definitely like seen as like the place to be mm -hmm. and where your hopes and dreams like you know, you step foot and everything is magical. Yeah. Um, not the case at all. <laughs> when, <Okay. laughs> when I show up to the house that I'm now going to be living in, and there's uh, two boys in there already, and then I have to share a room with my sister, I was like, oh, okay, I don't get everything that I want. I, I still <laughs> yeah. have to learn. So when you like on the plane, like, <laughs> oh, man, I'm about to go like to my own room. My, like, I have my, my own, own bed, expectation, like, but total yeah. privacy. <laughs> and then you show up, you're like, yeah, what, what is this? Is yeah, this? you have yeah. other kids. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, my my birth parents had two boys of their own. Okay. Um, and then they adopted two girls from the same country, mm. um, just on the other side of the country. So I what, would. So like, what made them decide to adopt from adopt in the first place? Yeah, so they just kind of felt called um, okay. to adopt, and um, they um knew that they felt God calling them to adopt. They mm -hmm. just, and the other cool part about them being let to be called is usually when you adopt, parents want to adopt kids that are babies. Mm -hmm. So they kind of grow up into their home and then they feel like more a part of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but my parents were willing to do kind of anything or mm -hmm. like willing to adopt anyone. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I was nine right. and I had... Uh, medical stuff that you know they had to deal with after they adopted me yeah um says a lot about um how they saw uh you know adoption and mm -hmm. just the willingness to not even worry about how hard it would be on them right right knowing that they also had two boys of their own of their already own. Yeah. yeah yeah so it, it's really cool and when I was younger I didn't really appreciate it as much as I do now yeah yeah because uh, at the time, you know, you're adopted and your whole world changes and you yeah. don't even know the language that well right, at all. Right, right. So having to learn that and then, um, you know, it's a culture shock for sure. Yeah. Um, and so it was just kind of, it took a while. And then once I think I went, when I went to college, I started to kind of realize, wow, they did a lot for me. Yeah, yeah. Even though it, it still wasn't easy, um, but it was... I'm very blessed because mm -hmm. usually uh, in a country like Bulgaria, 
sex trafficking is huge there. Mm-hmm. And so usually once you hit uh, 13 or 16, if yeah, you haven't if you're been like adopted. still in the orphanage, like, yeah. Yeah, if you haven't been adopted. Um, they have two orphanages. So when I was at, they usually keep you there till about seven. Mm-hmm. And then they move you to the next one. And oh. at that point, if you don't uh, get adopted or if anything, or if nothing happens with you, then they kind of let you go oh, okay. and release you. Yeah. Um, and who knows what would have happened. Right, right. Um, and so technically, me being nine, I should have been there. Um, but the director at the time was like, no, we're going to keep her there because she knew that I was about to be adopted. Mm. And so she wanted to just keep me there um, until I was adopted, which, yeah. you know, had it not been for her, like, who knows how it would have all worked out and whatnot. Yeah. So a lot of people looking out for you. Yeah. Like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the cool part about all of this is like it, throughout the whole process of my life, it's like you can't make it up. Like yeah. it's it's God's timing and everything. It's for like, sure. OK, this isn't. I couldn't have done anything Mm -hmm. like I had everything against me because I was older Mm -hmm. and I had medical stuff. So there wasn't anything I could offer, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's that willingness for my parents to do whatever God was calling them to do. And yeah, it was it worked out for sure. Yeah. 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 So were you were you accepted in the family right away or was there like some growing pains? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Uh yeah, I remember uh walking into the house and walking up the stairs and uh one of my brothers was at the top and like we didn't know I didn't know English that well. He didn't know Bulgarian. Um and so we were kinda like signing like, Oh, I'm nine and then he's like, I'm whatever age, yeah. you know. So that was kind of like the first interaction of like my brothers and then over time like yeah. But yeah, more or less they were excited, even like the cousin and grandparents and all mm. them, because they were like, Oh, this is a whole new person, like you know, like <laughs> yeah. let's make her welcome. Yeah. And I'm not a very like emotional person or like huggy touchy thing. And you're so, getting like massive amounts of Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was definitely I hate everything about yeah. this. <laughs> I was definitely like the topic. You know, when yeah. people would go and like we would get together and like everything. All right, let's go talk to her. And it's like, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was So great. you were like the focal point for all family oh, yeah. get togethers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't no. know why, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's why my parents adopted. Yeah. They're like, we need something in our lives. We need attention no, <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> um was so um is uh is your adoptive family were they kind of like the ones that introduced you into like the church and and religion <laughs> and stuff like that or yeah 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 so my dad um is um was a kids church pastor in mm-hmm. uh connecticut okay. um part-time is that like then... youth pastor or like uh yep yeah, youth okay um yeah we, our church didn't necessarily have youth. We had like the kids that, uh, like kids church and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, so he was kind of mainly in charge of that part okay. time. And then he had a full time job. But yeah. um, more or less, we were those kids that on Sundays, we would be there at like eight in, eight the, morning in the morning till, till like 12 or one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, this is the life right here. Um, but yeah, so I got uh told like about that life you know yeah everything about it at a young age mm-hmm. um so it you know didn't really understand it till i got more into college oh okay of what christianity is and what it means to really have a relationship with christ mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then once i got you know my own separate life in a way or mm-hmm. like um i kind of started to understand and was able to uh, talk to like my buddies about it and mm-hmm. whatnot and really kind of understand who and what he is all about you know yeah yeah um so that was more or less how yeah that started yeah um and it like it was obviously a major part of your life because you went to a, a christian college so yeah like, i did yeah <laughs> so you kind of played sports growing up um and you ended up throwing javelin at um liberty liberty right i did but yeah. you you said uh, you didn't want to throw javelin, is that right? Yeah, so <laughs> New England is kind of the only state that kind of has or allowed javelin in high schools. A oh, lot of okay. the southern states down here 
that'll happen in the high school is because it is a spear that you're throwing. So like too many people are getting impaled by this a, thing? A more is that less, like legit? I think like, so. Yeah. Oh, people yeah, are yeah. actually getting impaled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So it's funny because like Olympics or even at different uh, meets, the javelin tends to be in the middle of mm. the or inside the track. Mm -hmm. So it's the long jump and the triple jump. So if they're not paying attention, they and depending on the wind, literally they have, speared. yes, and they have been, or there has been stories of people getting pegged, uh, speared with it. And they should bring javelin throwing back to the south. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they have it in the colleges. Now they just need to bring it into high school because I mean, that's yeah. one way to make you, you know, tough. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> or make you aware of your surroundings, you know? Better look out or you're going <laughs> to fucking fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so my high school, uh, they the thrower's coach kind of had everybody go around each event. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I already knew the shot put and discus because okay. they had it in middle school. So I kind of was aware of it. So at first I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't know it. So mm -hmm. why would I try something new when I already have the two other one? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, everybody's trying it. So, you know, suck you it up and do it. Do yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did it and I was like, oh, I actually like it. And <laughs> it went a lot further than the shot putt and a lot further than the discus. So I was like, all right, I'll stick to this. Literally, yeah. You know? I feel like shot put is one of the most disappointing sports you can do. It can't be. It's so hard small. Yeah. and it goes nowhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, okay. So I could see javelin being a little bit more fun in that regard. Yes. Yeah. Um, were you... That day that you tried it out, were you like the best girl that was throwing that day or, um, or you just enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I think I was, I mean, I was one of the better ones mm -hmm. to throw. Um, I don't remember how far or like where I stacked up yeah. trying it right away, but by my senior year, I, I was... One of the better ones. The javelin thrower? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you get a patch for that on your jacket? Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I wasn't that good. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, but I, I did get a chance to, like, do a, uh, you know, they did a um, letter of intent of signing, you know, committing to oh, the university, yeah. and they had a ceremony and all that oh, that's for pretty it. Sick. So, yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit here and there. Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, so you went to go on to go throw at Liberty then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is was the fact that Liberty was a Christian college? Is that a big kind of reason you went there, or? Um, actually, so it's funny because um, Liberty at first I was not about it because okay. it was ten plus hours away. Yeah. From home, and that was technically like my first time by myself leaving home for mm -hmm. that far. Yeah. Um, and I was. And you had been in the states for what, like nine years at that point in time? Uh, give or take, yeah, yeah. around there, yeah. Okay. So I mean, I I didn't want to necessarily be that far away from home, mm -hmm. and I was being recruited in Rhode Island too, and like around the area. In the Northeast. In New yeah. Yeah. Um, but Liberty, my parents fell in love with it right away when they came down to like visit. So it your parents were like, "You're going here." So, <laughs> so then more or less, it was like. Uh, ultimately, it was my decision to go there, but because, you know, it is a D1 school mm -hmm. and it was a lot more opportunity. And my other thing was I didn't want to be surrounded by a party school mm -hmm. because I was like really wanting to commit to throwing the javelin. And I wanted to have teammates that were like minded, you know, mm -hmm. so Liberty fit that. Yeah. Um, and so ultimately, at the end of the day, I, I did uh, choose uh, Liberty. And within like the first week of being there, I was like, yeah, I, I made the right choice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, it was, it was really cool to, um, be able to throw at a D1 school and, yeah. uh, compete there mm -hmm. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you, you were throwing your freshman year and then you ended up getting an injury in your elbows. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, your freshman year, you try to prove yourself that you belong <laughs> on the team. And then, uh, I think it was the second meet or the third meet of the season and I could tell like it was it was something was not something right. was not right yeah, yeah. so uh their pro protocol is usually like uh rest it and then do rehab mm -hmm. from anywhere to four to six weeks and so I had done that rehabbed it all that I tried to throw it was still hurting me so mm. then at that point they were like yeah you need to get uh Tommy John mm. uh, surgery wow. um 
So that was my freshman year. Okay. And so um, that was not what I expected. Right, right. My career. Had you, had you heard that, like, from other Japanese? Yeah, or? I have heard. I've kind of heard. Actually, the funny thing is uh, we had a guy on the team, too. Yeah. And he had to get the surgery, too. He got the surgery, I think, a month before I did. Oh, and wow. so, like, we were both kind of in the same protocol of yeah. recovery okay. wise and rehab. So that was really nice to have. Um, but before then, I think I've heard of Tommy John, but I've heard of it through baseball. Yeah. So right. pitchers tend to have it, and I grew up enjoying watching baseball and all that. So mm -hmm. that's how I first heard it. And then when I heard about javelin throwers getting it, I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. And then it made sense because yeah. we do want to tend to drop the elbow and throw with our elbow versus right. trying to throw with the um, the whole body. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So that was my freshman year, and then I came back that following year. So your sophomore, so you were able to rehab in time to come back and yeah, start. that sophomore ish year, um, I was coming back, um, and I was able to compete a couple times, mm -hmm. uh, but it was still like Tommy John. It probably takes about two years, yeah, for it to really, um, and that's kind of what ended up happening is uh, by year, you know, two and a half or a year and a half to two years was mm -hmm. when it started to actually feel. Uh, better to the point where um, I was doing a lot better than before coming oh, okay. on so this, the team. Oh, okay, so junior year is when it started to like yeah really get better. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool because I got a chance to compete at Texas Relays, Penn Relays, and um, so it was like my season has finally like come to a point where like I started to enjoy the sport again, and mm -hmm. um, you know found the reason of like okay, this is. I'm meant to be here, and I, it's yeah. meant to be, you, you felt know. like you were doing exactly what you needed to do in yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so, like, that summer, I was like, all right, I'm going to train, get strong. Um, and then, yeah, I came back. Uh, by that point, it was, like, the summer of 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and our school does, like, a... Uh, like a missions trip that year, or they did mm -hmm. a missions trip in Kenya. Okay. One of our coaches was from Kenya, and he oh, okay. started an orphanage there. And I remember, like, going there, and, like, it was really cool because that was the first time kind of being back in that orphanage mm -hmm. experience. So I was so able was to share. That? Yeah, what was that like? Like, you having, like, almost come full circle. Full right? circle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was really cool uh, to be able to uh, share with them what I've been uh, yeah. went through. Um, as they're going through that phase, same, yeah, you know, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and like my teammates at the time were like, they couldn't comprehend really, mm -hmm. um, like the story and like what you went through until they were immersed in it. Yeah. So they got to experience what that was. Cause we were in the orphanage with the kids right. living there. So, so like, did that feel like it bonded you guys a little bit more? Like, oh yeah, as like, a team for sure. And yeah. then like for me, I bonded really well with with the uh, kids. With the kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it. Um, Do you still talk to any of them? One of them, I we wrote for a little while. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of lost touch with the fact that um, you know, that whole connection of like reaching out or mm -hmm. uh, having a no way of like kind of. Like giving all that but i should i should get back to yeah, reaching I mean. out yeah 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 because it is kind of neat to think that uh somebody went out of their way to start an orphanage because they saw a need for it and right they, you know but it was also cool because while we were down there um we ran like a track camp okay and so we were literally running with the kids competing with the kids and they were throwing uh I think they tried throwing the discus and then even tried doing like the high jump, mm -hmm. but instead of like falling on your back, they did like the scissor kick where they run up and then they just scissor it versus oh, like yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, trying to fall on their back just because they didn't have a mat. They just oh. had a pile of sawdust 
and some of the kids were like getting a good decent height on like they would be freaks if oh, they came yeah. over to the US oh, and learned for how, sure and, and like, then like some of their kids were beating our runners oh really yeah Did yeah, yeah. Just... and they were like barefoot too so it was like it's <laughs> it, they were very very gifted just some freak athleticism yes. over there <laughs> oh for sure yeah it humbled a lot of our guys you know <laughs> that's sweet <laughs> that's awesome but yeah so that, that was really cool to be able to have that experience that summer at yeah. our training um, and so I was very excited to get back uh, to school and then uh, train back with the throwers and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. Yeah. So does this kind of lead up to your injury then? Is yeah. that like senior year was, was kind of the injury? Um, yeah, uh, it was, I can't remember where, at what point I was in school, but it was around that senior, junior-ish year because I had mm -hmm. to redshirt that for, uh, first year. Oh, okay. So I technically had another year of eligibility. Oh, okay. So you, as an athlete, you kind of lose track on what year you're at. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so 2015, I was uh, October. At that point, we have been training and all that mm -hmm. um, with the team, and it was pretty regularly that we were meeting up Saturdays uh, morning. To, to do weightlifting, so. To weightlifting, yeah. 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 Um, a session in the morning, and then sometimes every now and then we'll do like a throwing session in the afternoon. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it was a typical Saturday morning mm -hmm. uh, for us, and um, yeah, I had, I was doing box step ups mm -hmm. with 135 pounds on my back. Yeah. And I had just gotten done with my set. And I was going back to racket, and mm -hmm. when I went back, I tripped up with my shoes, mm -hmm. and I sat straight down with the weight on my back. Yeah. And um, my teammates and coach like ran over to like take the weight off. Yeah. And so were you like you were legitimately sitting in the? I bottom was sitting down in the bottom, like with the weight with on. The weight, um, yeah. Yeah, you hadn't like dropped it or anything. I like? hadn't dropped it because I had clips on too, mm -hmm. so like. It was just on me, yeah. but I, I couldn't move it because it was such an awkward position that I was in. So, like, were you pinned between the cage, kind of, like, the rack? Um, or? No, I was, I was pinned more or less with the barbell and the floor. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I had sat down in an awkward position yeah. that I couldn't, like, shift it. And at that point, I was starting to be in pain. Okay. So, I couldn't move it out of the way. And yeah. at that point, like, the coaches and teammates ran over really quick Re yeah. to take it off. But yeah. So like when that when that was happening, like what was going through your mind? Like yeah, you so remember? as soon as they took the weight off, I laid down on my back and I was okay. like, oh, this hurts way too much. I need to like get up and shake it off. Yeah. And I couldn't. I couldn't. Like get you up. physically tried to get up. Yeah, or? I tried to. Yeah. And your then, teammates weren't like holding you down or anything, or is like um no. So the athletic trainer came over, mm -hmm. um, because he heard the noise, and then I think somebody else called him over. And because he didn't know where the pain was and whatnot, oh, okay. he was the one that like kept my head still and kept oh, okay. me from getting up. And I kept telling him like I just need to get up and like shake it off because yeah. I couldn't lay on my back because I was in so much pain. Yeah. Um, so when you say you were in pain though, like was it was it one spot or like what like what were can you remember like what you were feeling? Could you describe it to anyone or were you just kind of in shock or? I think I was in shock, and the pain was in the mainly in my back. Mm -hmm. um, but it it just felt like someone had like well also felt like somebody knocked the wind out of me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I was also kind of like panicking too in my head of like, well if I get up and shake it off it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't the case because as time progressed, it got worse and worse mm -hmm. to the point where. Um, the first responder was the school's police officers, mm -hmm. and they came over to uh, kind of help and assess the situation, and mm -hmm. they had helped me take the weightlifting shoes off, mm -hmm. and they asked me how that felt. Is that something you wanted to do, or is that something they wanted to do? Like, as you're lying there on your back, they were like, we need to get your shoes off, or? That was more or less they wanted to do that. Okay. Um, because, it, or, I, you know, I can't even remember, but I feel like they wanted to do that to see if that would help the pain. Okay. So they were like, okay, let's take these off. Mm -hmm. And they asked how that was. And I was like, what do you mean? How mm -hmm. was that? Like, I couldn't feel them taking yeah. them off. Wow. So I knew something was bad. Pro that was probably the first Did time. Did that, like, drive up your anxiety more at that point in time when you were like, what do you mean you took the shoes off? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I could... Like, I could kind of feel 
people like touch, but like when you were touching my legs, it was uh, I was in a lot of pain. Mm. Even though that wasn't where the pain was, and the pain was mm. in the back, mm -hmm. the nerves were damaged at that point to where like any sensation was painful. Oh. Even though you could touch, like I I just couldn't move. I couldn't do anything yeah. at that point. Yeah. So like when you so when you were there, like just lying there. If anyone was touching your leg, it was, was like in pain. instant pain yeah. signals, and like worse than what you were feeling in the back, or like just. Like... I think it was a mixture of it all. Yeah. Because like at that at that point, I was trying to understand what was happening, mm -hmm. um, but I just couldn't. Yeah. And I was like, you know, the trainer was trying to hold me down. Mm -hmm. I had my teammates coming, um, and actually, one of my first thoughts was I had to meet up with a buddy to do a project. Yeah. And one of my first things that I was thinking in my head was I called one of my buddies that I was lifting with and I was like, can you text this person and tell them I'm not meeting with them yeah. so that they're not wondering where I am. Right. And whereas other people wouldn't be thinking about that, yeah. that was in my head. I'm like, <laughs> make sure head. this person knows I'm not meeting You're with them so I it. don't look like a jerk yeah. uh, when I don't respond to their texts later on. Um, so that was kind of running through my head. And then once that was done, then I was like, good to go. Not really good to go, but good to go yeah. to like, you know, focus on my pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. That yeah. Was... So like what, so did they, like, how did you get out of that situation? Like, did they put you on a stretcher? Like they call a paramedic? Yeah. So, or... um, uh, the local hospital, uh, EMS came mm -hmm. and they, uh, put me on a stretcher the entire time. It was very painful okay, as they were lifting yeah. me and moving me and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and they tried to take uh, photos, like CT scans, MRIs, to make sure, like, you know, to see what was going on. And mm. they realized that that was out of their hands. Oh. My situation was way too big. So they could tell that in the ambulance? That, that, um, not that, like, when the images, when they were trying to take oh, images. at the hospital? At the hospital, oh, yeah. Okay. So they took me to the local hospital. Gotcha. And... Um, the entire time, like, as they're moving me, I remember, like, I was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty calm when it comes to, like, something like that. Or, like, I feel very bad if I'm being, if I feel like I'm being rude to someone mm -hmm. because I know they're just trying their best. And I remember, like, not going off, but, like, screaming when they were lifting me all up from the, uh stretcher yeah and to put me onto the hard surface to get the imaging was just excruciating it was so much pain and i like screamed yeah. and then um once they brought me to a room they realized that they got it the images in the wrong spot oh so i had to go, had back. To go back i had to go wow. back and get the images so when i went back i was like i apologized to the uh person taking the images for the last time i was like i'm really sorry like i'm just in a lot of pain and she's like you're fine like you don't need to apologize <laughs> yeah. for, you have a good reason <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah uh so then they um once they looked at the images they're like yeah no you need to go to the bigger hospital uva mm -hmm. so at that point they um airlifted me Oh, to wow. UVA. Yeah. And, so um, you were like underneath the helicopter yep. flying to the UVA. Yeah. Yep. Was that painful or did they? Oh, use, yeah. Yeah. So, and the other thing was they couldn't give me anything because they mm. needed to continue to assess the situation on how much I was losing mm. sensation wise. And so if they numbed me up and you then they're trying to do their sensation. tests, they yeah. couldn't, you know, it yeah. wasn't an accurate test. Um. So, but everybody like helicopter guys like every ambulance like everybody was so nice and polite and like really understood the situation to mm -hmm. where they managed to kind of keep things calm you know because yeah. the last thing you need is somebody to be freaking, freaking out, out and makes it the situation worse, worse. Yes. yeah um so that kind of just put peace in my mind of mm -hmm. like knowing that okay like obviously there's nothing we can do right now so mm -hmm. just stay calm and whatnot but mm -hmm. um yeah they ended up figuring out that i have fractured my t12 mm -hmm. um and typically when you do something with your vertebrae they'll fuse the bone above and the bone below mm -hmm. uh but how bad mine was they had to do two above and two below mm -hmm. so now i have um nine screws two rods and five bones acting as one in your back. In my back. Is your low back that they're at? Yeah, so T10 to L2 okay. is all fused. Yeah. So it's kind of like that middle, yeah. middle low back area. Um, but yeah, so um, at that point when they took me to 
um, UVA, they mm -hmm. realized like, and the doctor was telling me, yeah, you're not going to walk again. You, you know, there's no, um, you're going to have to figure out like what your new normal is. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and at the time also my parents were in Connecticut Yeah. and I told the people around, like my coaches and everybody. So like, this had all happened before your parents had even been able to come down, like within the day, this was all happening. Yeah. 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 Okay. So at that point, like. I had told my coaches not to tell my parents mm. because they were kind of dealing with stuff at home at that point mm -hmm. with my sister. And so I didn't want to be a burden on them um, with this. So I was like, don't worry about it. Like, mm -hmm. don't let them know. Um, and so as I'm in surgery and wake up, they're already there. Okay. Yeah. So they saw managed somebody to and told them. somebody else. Like, like, who did, did it? Did who that? <laughs> yeah. Switches, hey, Dad. Switches, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. I haven't found the person that I'm uh, to be. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More or less. They got told and they're like, why would you tell someone not to tell us yeah. that, you know, this happened? And I'm like, I didn't want you to worry. Like I knew I was in good hands. Yeah. Like, the yeah. coaches were around and all of that. But it was, um, not something that I wanted uh, attention for or mm -hmm. anything. So I was in my own world of like, I will figure it out myself mm -hmm. on how to figure it all out. Yeah. And again, like Liberty has like great trainers and great athletic program and the coaches were great. They were there the whole entire process. So in my mind, my parents being 10 plus hours away, they don't need to worry about it. Yeah, you know, right. It's, it's fine. <laughs> we'll figure this out. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was at UVA for about a week and a half or yeah. so. Let's go back to like what when the doctor like was like, you're never gonna walk again. What, ha like, <laughs> were you just like, su like surprise, shock? What was going through your head? Yeah, so they they told me that, and um, I in my mind because I'm am an athlete and competitor, like I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, sure, tell me what you want. But um, ultimately, too, like I knew, you know, I serve a. God that's way bigger and has done mm -hmm. miraculous stuff already with my life mm -hmm. that I was like, okay, sure. Let's see if you tell, tell that to God and uh, see what happens. Yeah. And yeah. he proved them wrong, but, um, <laughs> you <and> did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of, so you were kind of, when they told you that you were almost doubting it. Um, in, in a way I was, um, or in my mental state, I was like, well, I did, I'm not leaving the sport injured i'm yeah. coming back to my sport so yeah. whatever that looks like i'm gonna make a way yeah you know um and the cool part too is like you know god's way of like letting us know that he was around was like after i had the surgery a few hours later i was able to move my left toe mm. and at that point i wasn't moving at all and so they were like what is happening here? Like, wow, yeah. um, you know, it was, and we were all excited and whatnot that like, <laughs> you moved your left toe. Isn't it wild? Like something <laughs> as small as that. It's something just like, small. what? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, you've never been so excited to like move a toe or move right. a limb. And it was like, okay, this is, even though it's a long road ahead, um, you kind of took what you could, you got in, yeah. that, in that moment. So it's like really neat. But, um, at that point, too, I was in a lot of pain, mm -hmm. uh, physically and uh, mentally, too. Yeah. Um, medication that they were giving me wasn't helping me. Sleeping mm -hmm. was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, any position that I was in, I was in a lot of pain. And it it just, it was awesome. Teammates came and visited. Um, yeah. And it was about an hour and 15 minutes away for them. Okay. So it was really cool that they took the time to visit. Mm -hmm. But it did drain me by the end of the night. Um, and it just made the pain worse mm -hmm. because I had to interact and they made me laugh. So it, like all the muscles and everything just were contracting and then yep. you're like now yep. they're fatigued and you're trying yep. to they're relax to them and they're like, they're not and, wanting yeah. to relax at all. And <laughs> yeah. the other thing is like the injury that I had because of how, uh, like at the time I was like very toned and lean. Mm -hmm. It made things worse because when they're cutting through, they're cutting through muscle instead of fat that just yeah. sits there. So it just made the whole entire recovery process that much harder mm -hmm. because of the fact that they're literally tearing um, through it. Sorry, we have some Zumba classes coming in here, but I think we're good. So. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but, so they were literally tearing muscle apart. As yeah, so through. when they were, yeah, because they had to get uh, into the vertebrates. Um, and so in order to do that, you have to kind of cut through. Oh, and okay. so they were, um, you know, uh, fat is tend to just sit there. Right. 
when your muscle. muscle is like it wants to be together so right. it just made things a lot worse and tight yeah um and so it, it was just interesting uh, yeah. process um you were like a very recover. unique situation for very them. unique yeah 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 and that's why like you know eventually obviously I, I got to the point where i could walk yeah and so for him like and Maybe we can start like start there too. Like, yeah. So you were going to physical therapy then, like yeah. nonstop, right? Yeah. So um, I was at UVA for about a week and a half, and then they took me to Shepherd Center here mm. in Georgia. Okay. And so I was there for about a month, and I remember like it being like the realization of how bad this was day one of PT mm. when you're reeling yourself in uh, PT and everybody on the, on the floor was all spinal cord injury. Yeah. And so like you're going to PT and everybody's in a wheelchair. And at that point you're like, what the, what, what on earth? What was the mood there? Like, was everyone kind of just like, what just happened to my life or? Um, so Shepherd Center does a really good job. And as far as like, um, it, it can be a little bit tricky to get in Okay. because their thought is they want people that have the mindset of, I'm going to do this. I'm going to conquer this or okay. I'm going to figure out what my new normal is. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had the option to do rehab locally in Virginia, but ultimately uh, another athletic trainer was like, no, you need to go here. Like this is the best place to go, gotcha. especially somebody that has the physical aspect that you do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Shepherd Center has like the top notch people in um that worked for them so yeah. it was really cool to just be surrounded by that yeah didn't make things any better but at least knowing that they knew what was happening and they're mm -hmm. trained for it made things a lot easier oh, okay um do you feel like if you had gone so like obviously yes you are walking now yeah. Like how, yeah how long did that whole process take like yeah so i ended up because <clears throat> this is like this is still senior year of of college right yeah, but point. I ended up doing, I had to extend my college years. Uh, so even though it was technically, I think, my senior year, mm -hmm. I still had a little bit of time after that. But oh, okay. um, so we'll just say like 2015 was when I was going into it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, at that point, it took about a month and a half for me to be able to like stand up and actually like walk. Okay. Um, so by the time I left, did you send a picture to your doctors? <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing was there was a doctor there at Shepherd Center, and he said the same thing as far as, like, even if you do walk, if there's that chance of you walking again, yeah, you're not the same person. Because, like, he was telling me how with the nerves, when you damage them, mm -hmm. there's no telling whether or not they come back. Mm -hmm. And even if they do, they don't come back the same. Mm. So there was a lot going against me. And, you know, as he's telling me this, I'm like, I, I was emotional, but I was also like, all right, well, I'm going to prove you wrong because yeah. I am going back to throwing. Yeah. Um, and so that was always kind of in the back of my head of like the athlete mentality of like, okay, well, let me just prove you wrong. Right. <laughs> um, and so by the time I left, I was using a cane. Okay. Um, and, and this I was, is how many weeks? Uh, a month and a half to two months. Okay, so six to eight. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that. around yeah, there. Six to eight weeks. Yeah. So. And were they like, what in the world? Like, you're walking right now? Like, were they just in shock? Yeah, so they have. Um, Shepherd Center is also like, they literally spe specialize in spinal cord injuries yeah. and brain injuries. So mm -hmm. um, they kind of have a system to where when you first get there, they test you to see if you're ready to actually start training to get back mm. the uh walking or not if your spinal cord is completely like cut there's no chance of you kind of coming back to being able to walk but because at that point i was able to feel and able to even though sensitivity was still uh super low super low for me and like i it was painful for people to kind of touch my legs um that they was could still tell like a good sign. That was, it was a good sign okay. knowing and I can move my left toe and foot at, at that point. So yeah. they were like, okay, you're at a point where we can start doing um, progress you into that stage of getting to walk. So they would hook me up to a um, like a 
dolly system or a pulley system where mm -hmm. I was uh, harnessed. Yeah. And they were kind of uh, helping me. They were moving my feet. So you're kind of like a puppet almost. Exactly. Yeah. I was literally, yeah, a puppet <laughs> yeah. except they were, yeah, m lifting my leg, okay. walking it. Because at that point, they were trying to basically remind my brain and my nervous system that, this hey, is what, you, this is how you do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know how to do this. Yeah. Now we're trying to remember how to do it. Yeah. So and was that part painful too? Or? That was painful. Yeah. Yeah. There was many days in PT where I would go and I would just start crying yeah. because they would try to get me to move. And because of how much pain I was in, it, it's great because even though I could feel, mm -hmm. It meant I could feel everything. Yeah. Um, so the pain, the moving, everything I could feel. And that just made things a lot worse. And that was me. like six to eight weeks straight. Every day you were like waking up and be like, all right, here we yep. go again. Yep. Like, this is going to be yeah. painful. And nights were usually a nightmare. Um, and so I would get up and like try to take the medicine that they give me or like try to do stuff and uh, just kind of get through the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the other people that were there on the same floor as me, I was talking to them and they were like, yeah, I stopped taking the medicine a while ago. And I'm like, <laughs> like what? What? Like, what? <laughs> and then later on, I find out that like their spinal cord was completely cut. So they have no chance oh. of even coming back. They have no feeling whatsoever below the waist or below the neck or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And so I would, you know, it made me realize like, okay, I'm thankful to be able to feel, but at the same time, it still sucked that I yeah. could feel it. And, uh, it, you know, there was a little more hope for me Yeah, in right. that situation. Right. So you showed back up to school in a cane. Um, yep. Yeah. Which, like, what was the pain level at that point in time? Um, it was pretty high. Yeah. Uh, it was also, the pain was pretty high there, but mentally, I think I was more drained from you know, what just happened and yeah. I was trying to figure it out. And Shepherd Center was great because everybody on the floor was the same. So you can talk and relate with everybody. Once I got out of there and I was in Virginia, like, it just felt like I was alone. What just happened to me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody wanted to talk to me and whatnot and figure out how I'm doing and all that. But you know, like when you're hurt and like people just ask, I feel like they're just asking to know. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like a genuine. Right. And there was a few people that like when they asked, I know exactly that they were genuine mm -hmm. about it because they would always bring me to emotion mm -hmm. um, when they were asking because I know I could, I felt comfortable enough to kind of let loose and yeah. like really let them know how I was actually doing. But um, men mentally, it was a hard, hard year. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever been in that low in yeah. my life when yeah. this injury happened, especially since, you know, at that point I was adopted. I had Tommy John, like how much more, you know, could one person continue to take on, you right. know? So Literally when this happened, just told you were paralyzed. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So especially right when things were going well in the sport for me and right. then like that happened. So at that point I like, there was no point for me and I was getting to the point where I was, um, not wanting to live anymore you mm. know my pain was high and um my parents at that point were back in connecticut mm. and it just felt very alone yeah uh, because i wasn't on the team really mm. um i was helping them out a little bit here and there but um it, it just took a long time for me to get to the point where um i i was told like rather than looking ahead mm -hmm. look at how far you've come mm -hmm. and a lot of times we always want that future stuff mm -hmm. that's out of our reach mm -hmm. instead of focusing where you are now yeah. and what you've done in the past yeah. so it was like i had a buddy remind me of that of like hey like you weren't even walking a few months ago so like look at where you are now right and that kind of like put things in perspective of like okay like you know as hard as it is like throughout time it just got better yeah yeah so that was kind of the thing that snapped you out of it was like that individual sitting you down and being like hey like i know you're going through some shit right now yeah but like you literally were at the point where you were told you were never going to walk yep. again yeah look, look at you now yeah and yep. so that kind of was like a like you're right type moment yeah yeah i had that moment and then like my family um you know i remember calling my dad a few like many many times mm -hmm. um and it was a lot of like crying session when mm -hmm. i was calling him because um you know it, he was so far away and for him it was also hard yeah and he didn't necessarily show emotion in the calls mm -hmm. uh, but later on he would tell me how 
you know, emotional he would get after talking to me or like after talking with someone else about me. Totally. Um, because it was one of his kids. Yeah. You know, and he, there wasn't anything he could really do at mm-hmm. that time. And he was all the way in Connecticut. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he just wanted to kind of be there, but he couldn't. Couldn't. Yeah. 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 Um, I also was very eager to get back into school. Mm hmm. And so I think that wasn't a very smart decision. Mm. I think I should have probably taken a semester off. Oh, okay. um, but again, I had that drive of like, I'm coming back. Right, right. Um, it was some. It was already set in your head that you were coming yeah. back. So you were, yep. you were going back. Yep. I was like, I'm proving you wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. <laughs> So I already proved them wrong when I was able to walk and I'm like, all right, well, let's keep it going. Yeah. You know? uh, but javelin alone is already hard on the body as it is. Yeah. The whole pounding and like the slamming and like and the your body. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I tried to get go back to it, but I just couldn't mm-hmm. anymore at that point. So. So when was it like you got to the point where you were like, I'm going to start trying some athletic things? Like how many months? Or um. Years? So I tried to throw the javelin uh, uh, you know a little after i was at a point where i wasn't in pain anymore but that okay. like that pain went like it took a while um but i never fully like tried to see if i could throw oh, okay. because it, any rotation hurt and yeah. anything like that so i knew that wasn't really something i was going back to once i realized mm. the rotation and just yeah. how much it impacted uh takes um and so at that point I was like, all right, well, I don't want anything to do with sports. I'm mm-hmm. done with it. So I finished college and, um, you know, 2020 came around. And at that point, I, even though I looked like I was fit, um, there wasn't anything fit about me. Um, okay. <laughs> even doing pushups, I was like, wow, <laughs> I used to be able to knock them out. And now you're just like, now I'm like five and I'm, and I'm out of breath, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah. okay, something's got to change. Um, and a buddy, a teammate of mine, had posted uh, f- videos of being at a CrossFit gym and whatnot. Yeah. And I had done some CrossFit stuff when I was on the track team with mm-hmm. my buddy, but like decided to just go ahead and try it for a week and yeah. see how it is. And you know, I ended up sticking around and uh, fell in love with it. And yeah. my new, you know, process now, like when I was on the track team, it was like. I had to be there, you know, Mm -hmm. I have to be there to train, to get better at the sport um, because I'm more or less there for the sport, you know? Mm -hmm. And once, uh, you know, my injury happened, there was no more um, joy Mm -hmm. that I had with the sport anymore or in fitness. And so I lost any any hope with that. Mm -hmm. And then um, once I found uh, CrossFit again. Kind of rekindled it. Yeah, it, it more or less like, it's a privilege. Yeah. Anytime that I get to walk inside a gym yeah anytime i'm walking on the uh, competition floor running on a competition floor running in the gym yeah uh coaching doing anything related to it it's i see it as a privilege and i get to do it i don't yeah. have to do it i get to and, it's, and you think a lot of that comes from from your injury like, yeah yeah that, yeah that mindset comes a lot from like i was not walking and now i'm snatching now I'm, <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. not walking and now i'm able to tie my own shoe and run yeah um and so it's knowing just what it meant to have been taken away Mm -hmm. and now i had it back and now it's like oh wow this means a lot more to me yeah knowing that um people kind of take it for granted Mm -hmm. as one should because they have no reason to not Mm -hmm. um when your body's capable and physically you're good and um it it just for me it was a different fire now to be able to do it and uh, even with the sport now or coaching, it's like I get to relate with people that are going through an injury or going through something, and it's like, okay, like know that it's not, you're not done with it, and mm-hmm. we can find a different thing for you to do. Yeah. So having that understanding of like, okay, you were injured once, what were you doing? Or mm-hmm. like, you were injured, how can you see it in a way to help somebody else? Mm-hmm. You know. So mm-hmm. I ultimately believe that like we go through things in our lives to be able to relate. Yeah. With somebody else going through it. So Yeah. Or just whenever challenges come up, we now have the experience to help others. Be able or, to, yeah. 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 Um as hard as it is, and you don't want that on anyone. <laughs> right. Um it's like, okay, yeah. now I understand that, you know, I'm able to help someone else out that mm-hmm. may be struggling with it. Yeah. Um, so that's been a blessing yeah. for sure. Yeah. So CrossFit really just kind of like brought a lot of joy back into your life, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so 2020 was when I found the gym. Mm-hmm. And um, 
was there for a couple months and then COVID yep. happened. <laughs> yep. So our gym was actually really cool. Uh, the owner um, ended up doing a lot of programming at home programming. Okay. And she lent out like dumbbell barbells. Krista, right? Yep. Yeah. Krista, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was able to lend out a lot of the equipment so yeah. you could do it at home. So in my mind, a lot of the other gym were not necessarily doing programming. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of members dropped their mm -hmm. membership. And in my mind, I'm like, they're already going out of their way to program and give us equipment. There's no reason to drop my yeah. membership at that time. Um, and so like I stuck around with it and I did a lot of stuff on my own. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think it was a good thing that COVID happened because with my mindset of like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> dive in and like all or nothing, I like, yeah. probably would have been injured again. It allowed you to kind of build a little bit more of a base. Yeah. yeah yep. And sure. then like that confidence too of like, okay, how do I do this again? Yeah. Um, but it was nice um, once COVID was done and we were back in the gym. Yeah. Um, I think we kind of went back in August or later in the fall. Let's see. I think I did the camp there in September for you guys. Okay. So, and you guys have probably been open for a couple months, I think, at that point in time. Yeah, so, that sounds about right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, and now you're, like, you just competed at Fitness of the Coast in yep. the Elite Division on a team. Yep. Um, you did Crash Crucible in the Elite Division on yep. a team. Um, um, it wasn't was Elite, RX. it was RX. RX, yeah. Yeah, yep. Um, you've you're stronger than you were yeah when you were running track now too correct yeah yeah, yeah it's actually uh it's it's you know snatching and anything overhead for me has been a struggle mm -hmm. uh but i'm i think when i was on the track team i was only able to snatch maybe 135 mm -hmm. at most mm -hmm. and i think my best here is now like 150. um and so knowing that and just knowing like my fit fitness level is way better than it was even when i was competing right. so it's kind of neat to see the process. Yeah. You know, like a lot of the time people are wanting it like right away. Right. And the reality is like it's not built in overnight. Yes. It takes time and commitment and um So you're I'm, buying into the three to five years that I told you. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that but uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but you know, it's fitness just means a lot more to me in the sense of even doing a Spartan race. Yeah. Every time that I've done it for the last two years and like each time that like, um, it's very hard to do a Spartan race, but each time that I'm running in it, I'm like, what a huge blessing. And like, I would say the first 800 meters, uh, it's a lot of emotion mm -hmm. because of the fact that it's realizing that like, wow, just to think that they I was told me doing, I was never yeah. gonna do this. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that was really, um, really cool experience and even like uh this past weekend we had the competition at crash and mm -hmm. they had a weighted vest run for you know you had to do a 5k mm -hmm. and just the entire time while you're running you're in pain while you're running but you're thinking or I'm thinking everybody about it. is not just you everybody <laughs> right everybody's yeah. in pain but like in my thought process it's like wow the fact that I'm even walking and running and all that and it's like it's, yes it's a lot of pain but it's mm -hmm. a lot of like appreciation for being able to do it, yeah. you know? So like even talking to someone about it, my injury and they're like, you were paralyzed. And it's like, they would never know. Yeah. Um. So that's really cool knowing mm -hmm. that like, okay, like there's something cool that's come out of uh, having gone through that. Totally, yeah, yeah. Um, do you feel like CrossFit has helped you become more like mobile, strong, like and resilient in like from other future injuries or? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, CrossFit is very humbling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no you doubt. learn a lot with it and it's been uh, a journey. A lot of sports, I, you know, grew up playing soccer, basketball, different sports and whatnot, but CrossFit's been the only one that's kept my attention mm -hmm. uh, just because there's, oh, there's so much. Mm -hmm. There's so much to learn. And even when you get a movement down, okay, now how can we perfect it? How mm -hmm. can you get quicker? How can you get stronger in that movement or whatever it is? So it's, um, it's a very humbling experience, but yeah. it's also been like, wow, I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know, you know, if I work this amount of time, like eventually you'll get a movement down and then you can perfect it and um, continue to grow in that sport in itself. So mm -hmm. um, it, I've learned a lot from it. Yeah. And continue to be humbled every yeah. time. Yep. <laughs> that I show up in there and I'm yeah. like, okay, there's another weakness. <laughs> yeah. Um... So what would you say like the biggest lessons that you've kind of taken away from uh, honestly like all your experiences in life you know from being like orphan coming to america like 
tearing your UCL, then all of a sudden you're like finding your stride and boom, you get knocked back down, paralyzed. Yep. Like, um, what would you say some of like the biggest lessons you've learned from all this are? So um, the stuff that I've learned with my injuries mm -hmm. um, are uh, basically the fact that life is gonna happen, mm -hmm. whether you're ready for it or not. You can have your life planned out the way you want and ultimately God's got another uh, way Route or another you path you know yeah. as much as we want a nice smooth road um, that's not reality mm -hmm. and I think I've learned that throughout the my life mm -hmm. um, but I also do believe going through the stuff that I've gone through I'm able to reach people that other people may not be able to so my experience of being able to go to Kenya and uh, be in an orphanage with other kids I was able to relate with them mm -hmm. a lot better than uh, my teammates were um, people that are now going through some injuries at our gym mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of relate with them as far as um, letting them know that there's other options there's other things you don't need to not show up to the gym because mm -hmm. you have an injury mm -hmm. you know like um, the coaching staff at the gym does a great job on being able to accommodate people that are uh, going through an injury, which is awesome, and mm -hmm. you don't always find that at right. gym. So right. the fact that we kind of welcome anyone is really, really yeah. cool yeah. Um, to be able to go through. But, yeah, ultimately, I I don't think my life has gone the way I have planned, but I also <laughs> am thankful for the fact that I am where I am today because yeah. um, I – see things differently now than I did before. Mm -hmm. And I'm more thankful for it and mm -hmm. I appreciate it way more than I did before. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like you got, like you legitimately got a second chance and you're yep. like, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I 100% am very thankful for it and just understanding that like, I, I could have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life and um, having to navigate that and having to go through that, I don't think that I would be around or I it would be a lot harder for me to have uh come out of it for sure um but you know I was able to come back walking and uh it's it's an amazing experience to be able to do that for sure for yeah. sure um do you have any advice for anyone that is struggling like maybe like mentally physically going through um going through an injury or significant injury right now like do you have any advice or perspective you could give to people for that or yeah letting them know that you know it's not the end of the world mm -hmm. as much as we think that it is or if we, as much as we think that we're alone um not being afraid to be vulnerable with your buddies that do ask you how you are yeah and letting them know that you're actually not doing well and you're uh you need the support and uh, someone just to be there and to talk through things and whatnot. So um, I think more or less just having that realization of like, it, it will be okay. And mm -hmm. um, seeing things day to day mm -hmm. and not looking at what you want later on mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we are told we're not promised tomorrow. We're only promised today. So mm -hmm. um, don't worry so much about what, it's coming versus looking back at how far you've come mm -hmm. and now how what can we do in that day mm -hmm. that you do have mm -hmm. that you're promised that day but not tomorrow yeah so have some long-term goals kind of but focus on the here and now here and now yeah. yeah yeah yep sweet so what's next what's next um i am now doing a grid yeah <laughs> grid <laughs> Let's yeah go. so um that's a new adventure. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, What's your role on the team? I'm a utility player. Okay. So a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm learning what that all is. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have training coming up and we have our first match in July. So mm -hmm. um, I'm excited for that and excited to just figure out what this sport even is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a huge blessing and I would have laughed at you <laughs> if you asked me 2015 or even 2016 if I was ever going to be here like would you ever see it and yeah. I would just laugh at your face you probably um, hadn't you probably hadn't heard of grid no. until what three months um, ago four months ago no so I started following it through um a buddy who would send videos oh, of okay. them doing crazy things and I'm like wow that's really cool yeah and then when the opportunity presented itself I'm like is this the same 
thing and then yeah and it was, yeah that is oh that is what, the same yeah, thing yeah. okay <laughs> so i <clears throat> i knew of them i would never have imagined myself doing it yeah and so to be given this opportunity uh it's a it's huge pretty, blessing yeah, yeah sweet uh what team are you on uh gainesville wild okay cool uh, yep. So if you want to see Yana doing some pretty <laughs> sweet stuff out on the competition yeah, yep. floor, you can give them a follow. Um, yeah, well, how, so thanks for coming on. Uh, it was a great, uh, you have a great story and uh, that story has helped you to have a great um, perspective on training and um, I think it's made you a very resilient person as well. So yeah. um, hopefully people can take something away from this podcast, maybe one of the lessons that you've learned yeah, throughout yeah, your yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on, and yeah. I do appreciate the opportunity to just kind of share my life and share for sure. um, what God's done in my life. And yeah. um, you know, if you have questions or anything, reach yeah, out. Yeah, how do people and, find you? Uh, I do have an Instagram. Uh, I believe it's ybabs under, underscore, um, and then I do have a Facebook, but I don't really use that as much. Yeah, Facebook Inst- sucks. Yeah. Instagram is the way to go. Yeah. What um, about like email address? Can people, you check that at all? Uh, Instagram really? is probably the best way. Okay. Because okay. email, like, yeah, it's <laughs> too complicated. Okay. Deal, um, deal. But if they wanted to reach out Instagram and they wanted my email, then we can okay. talk that okay. way. Deal. But yeah, we can't, <laughs> right keep, can't be giving out everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, hope hope you uh, enjoyed this one with Yana. Um, obviously, follow her on Instagram. Follow Gainesville Wild to check her out. Uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the video. And then uh, follow us on Instagram as well at blacklisted.hq. So we'll catch you guys next time.